Hey folks, Tommy Cowd here on the lawn with you with Growing Green. And it's a hot one today. It's uh, September 3rd and we're kind of dying down as far as the heat we thought, but no. People decided to break out aerators and aerovators, slit seeders, and decide to s do some seeding. And guess what happens when you do that? Mother Nature says, no, 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 you're not going to do it that easy. So she cuts the water off. So we're kind of in a dry spell. I want to show you this rare disease of tall fescue that appears every now and then, but this is, he's turned the water off here, but this is a zoospore disease. This is a pythium on tall fescue. And if you can see some of the mycelial growth that was really, really active, you'll see a little bit of the webbing and it's attacking all of this. There's even some areas up by the house and down in here. Now we've done an application of fungicides for brown patch disease, but it really doesn't cover the pythium. So as this area here got really, really wet, I mean saturated soaking wet, and you get the humidity, the heat, lots of water, you're going to have some sporulation. You're going to have development of this pythium root rot disease. So you can see it's really caused some damage here. But this is a rare one. You don't normally see this on tall fescue. Usually on golf greens like bent grass where the watering can get out of hand sometimes. Uh, but watering obviously got out of hand down here. It's the lower end of the yard. Not discounting what's going on up there at the top of the yard though. But this area was really saturated down here. So that's pythium root rot on tall fescue. Thought I'd share that with you. All right, Tommy Cowett with Growing Green on the lawn, signing out. Have a great one. Hey folks, Tommy Cowett here back on the lawn with you. Listening to a little baby hawk up here in this tree going crazy, but I wanna show you something else. Here it is, the 4th of August more disease issues and this is more of the pythium this is a different lawn and we're seeing this pythium root rot spreading on this lawn see how it starts out as these little spots water soaked lesions are kind of just circular but there will be some frog eye patterns forming here as you can see we're going to end up at the the fungus is working its way out there's a lot of this mycelial growth that you can see if you look really close into the stand. You can see the fungus, the mycelium, the webbing, the water-soaked lesions on the plants. This might come across, you might think this could be brown patch. It's not brown patch. Uh, it's distinctly pythium root rot. We've had so much rain. But if you look out over that lawn, you can see it's just spreading. And the thing is, this lawn is on fungicides, but not for pythium. Pythium requires a different animal of a fungicide. Um, we use sterile inhibitors a lot, uh, or strobilurin type chemistry. I'm probably talking foreign to you, but uh, these are different classes of chemistry that we use for brown patch rhizoctonia disease. This is a different animal. This is pythium root rot, and the chemicals to treat this are very, very expensive, uh, much higher than you would uh, expect. I mean, and you know, at this point in time, this disease is going to subside. It won't continue. The temperatures are getting a lot cooler out here, and it's seeding season. Everything's flagged off here for the aerators. And there's already been some seed put out on this beautiful lawn. And they're not going to lose much uh, in the way of, you know, turf. It's a little unsightly now. But as this disease subsides, we won't have an issue. Anyway, just wanted to share that with you. Tommy Cow back on the lawn looking at more pythium on tall fescue. Very, very unusual.